Hi there, I'm Hassan, I'm an artist, and usually when I tell people I'm an artist, they just look at me and they said, do you paint? Or what kind of medium do you work in? And uh, well, I'd, most of my work that I work with is really a little bit about methodologies of working rather than actually a specific discipline or a specific technique. So what I'm really interested in is creative problem solving. And I had a little bit of a problem a few years ago. So let me show you a little of that. Uh, so it started over here. And this is the Detroit airport in June 19th of 2002. I was flying back to the US from an exhibition overseas. And as I was coming back, well, I was taken by the FBI, met by an FBI agent, and uh, went into a little room and asked me all sorts of questions of where were you, what were you doing, who are you talking with, why were you there, who pays for your trips, all these little details. And then literally just out of nowhere, the guy asks me, where were you September 12th? And uh, when most of us get asked, where were you September 12th, or any date for that fact, you know, it's like, I don't exactly remember, but I can look it up for you. So I pulled out my little PDA and I said, okay, let's look up my appointments for September 12th. At September 12th, from 10 to 10.30, I paid my storage bill. From 10.30 to 12, I met with Judith, who was one of my graduate students at the time. From 12 to 3, I taught my intro class. 3 to 6, I taught my advanced class. Where were you the 11th? Where were you the 10th? Where were you the 29th, the 30th? Where were you October 5th? We read about six months of my calendar. And I don't think he was expecting me to have such detailed records of uh, what I did, but good thing I did, you know, well, it's because I don't look good in orange. But uh, so he asked me, uh, so the storage unit that you paid the rent on, what did you have in it? I was like, well, this was in Tampa, Florida. So it's like winter clothes that I have no use for in Florida, uh, furniture that I can't fit in my ratty apartment. You know, just assorted garage sale junk, because I'm a pack rat. And he looks at me really confused and says, no explosives. <laughs> I was like, no, no, I'm, I'm pretty certain there were no explosives. And if there were, I would have remembered that one. And, uh, you know, he's still a little confused. But I think anyone that talks to me for more than a couple of minutes realizes I'm not exactly a terrorist threat. And uh, so we're, we're sitting there. and. Eventually, after about an hour, hour and a half of just going back and forth, he says, okay, I have enough information here. I'm going to pass this on to the Tampa office. They're the ones that initiated this. They'll follow up with you and we'll take care of it. It's like, great. So I go home and then I'm, the phone rings and uh, manages himself. And basically, this is the uh, FBI offices in Tampa where I spent six months of my life, back and forth, not six months continuously. By the way, you folks know that in the United States, you can't take photographs of federal buildings. But Google can do it for you. So if the folks from Google, thank you. <laughs> so there, I spent a lot of time in this building. You know, questions like, uh, have you ever witnessed or participated in any act that may be detrimental to the United States or a foreign nation? And you have to also consider the state of mind you're in when you're you know, doing this. I mean, you're, you're basically face to face with someone that essentially decides life or death. Uh, or questions such as, actually during the polygraph, which was how it finally ended after nine consecutive of them, one of the polygraph questions was, well, the first one was, is your name Hassan? Yes. Are we in Florida? Yes. Is today Tuesday? Yes. Because you have to ba base it on a yes or no. Then, of course, in the next question is, do you belong to any groups that wish to harm the United States? I work at a university. <laughs> you know? So I was like, well, you know, maybe you want to ask some of my colleagues that directly, but I, mean, I said, okay, aside from what we had discussed, do you belong to any groups that wish to harm the United States? I was like, no. All right, so at the end of, after the end of six months of this and nine consecutive polygraphs, they said, hey, everything's fine. I was like, I know, but that's what I've been trying to tell you guys all along. I know everything's fine. <laughs> so they're, sitting there, they're looking at me, it's really odd, and I said, like, guys, you know, I travel a lot. This is with the FBI. And I was like, you know, all we need is a last guy not to get the last memo, and here we go all over again. And there was a sincere concern there. I said, well, you know, if you get into trouble, give us a call. We'll take care of it. So ever since then, before I would go anywhere, I'd call, my, I'd call the FBI. Uh, I'd tell them, hey, guys, this is where I'm going. This is my flight, OK? Northwest Flight 7 coming into Seattle on March 12th or whatever. A couple of weeks later, I'd call again, let them know. You know, it wasn't that I had to, but I chose to. Just wanted to say, hey guys, don't want to make it look like I'm making any sudden moves. I don't want you guys. <laughs> you know, I don't want you guys to think that I'm I'm about to flee. Just letting you know, heads up. 
And uh, so I just kept doing this over and over and over. And then the phone calls turned to emails, and the emails got longer and longer and longer with pictures, with <laughs> travel tips. <laughs> then I'd make websites. And then I built this over here. Let me go back to over here. So, so I actually designed this back in 2003. So this kind of tracks me at any given moment. I wrote some code for my uh, mobile phone. Basically, what I decided is, OK, guys, you want to watch me? That's cool. But I'll watch myself. It's OK. You don't have to waste your energy or your resources. And, and, you know, and I'll, I'll help you out. So in the process, I started thinking, well, what else might they know about me? Well, they probably have all my flight records. So I decided to put all my flight records from birth online. <laughs> so this is, you can see Delta 1252 going from Kansas City to Atlanta. And then you see, these are some of the meals that have been fed on the planes. <laughs> This was on Delta 719 going from JFK to San Francisco. See that? They won't let me on a plane with that, but they'll give it to me on the plane. <laughs> These are some of the airports that I hang out in, because I, like I, I like airports. At Kennedy Airport, May 19th, Tuesday. This is in uh, Warsaw, Singapore. You can see they're kind of empty. These images are shot really anonymously to the point where they're really, it could be anyone. But if you can cross-reference this with the other data, then, it, then you're basically replaying the role of the FBI agent and putting it all together. When you're in a situation where you have to justify every moment of your existence, you're put in this situation where you react in a very different manner. At the time that this was going on, the last thing on my mind was art project. I was certainly not thinking, hey, I got new work here. But after going through this, after realizing, well, what just happened? And after piecing together this, this, and this, this way of actually trying to figure out what happened for myself eventually evolved into this. And it actually became this project. So, so these are the stores that I shop in, some of them, because you know, they need to know. This is me buying some uh, duck-flavored paste at the Ranch 99 in Daly City on Sunday, November 15th, at the Koreana supermarket, buying my kimchi, because I like kimchi. And I bought some crabs, too, right around there and some chitlins at the Safeway in Emeryville. <laughs> and laundry, too. Laundry detergent at uh, West Oakland, or East Oakland, sorry. And then my uh, pickled uh, jellyfish at the Hong Kong supermarket on Route 18 in East Brunswick. Now, if you go to my bank records, it'll actually show something from there. So you know that on May 9th, I bought $14.79 in fuel from Safeway in Vallejo. So not only that I'm giving in, uh, this information here and there, but now there's a third party, an independent third party, my bank, that's verifying that, yes, indeed, I was there at this time. So there's points. These points are actually being cross-referenced, and there's a, there's a verification taking place. Sometimes they're really small purchases. So 34 cents, foreign transaction fee. All these are extracted directly from my bank accounts, and everything pops up right away. Sometimes there's a lot of information. This is exactly where my old apartment in San Francisco was. And then sometimes you get this. Sometimes you just get this, just an empty hallway in Salt Lake City, January 22nd. Uh, and I can tell you exactly who I was with, where I was, because this is the kind of what I had to do with the FBI. I had to tell them every little detail of everything. I spent a lot of time on the road. This is a parking lot in Elko, Nevada, off of Route 80 at 8.01 p.m. At, on August 19th. I spent a lot of time in gas stations, too. Empty train stations. So there's multiple databases, and there's thousands and thousands and thousands of images. There's actually 46,000 images right now on my site. And uh, you know, the FBI has seen all of them, at least I trust they've seen all of them. <laughs> and then there's sometimes you don't get much information at all. You just get this empty bed. And sometimes you get a lot of text information and no visual information. So you'll get something like this. This, by the way, is the location of my favorite sandwich shop in uh, California, Vietnamese sandwich. So there's different categorizations of meals eaten outside, empty train stations, empty gas stations. These are some of the meals that I've been cooking at home. So how do you know these are meals eaten at home? Well, the same plate shows up a whole bunch of times. <laughs> So again, you have to do some detective work here in putting together. So sometimes the databases get so specific. These are all tacos eaten in Mexico City near a train station on July 5th to July 6th. <laughs> at 11.39 was this one. At 1.56 was this one. At 4.59 was this one. So I timestamp my life every few moments. Every few moments, I shoot the image. It, it's, now it's all done on my iPhone. And it all goes straight up to my server, and my server does all the back-end work. And, categorizes things and puts everything together. They need to know where I'm doing my business, you know, because they, they want to know about my business. So on December 4th, I went here. And on uh, Sunday, June 14th at 2.09, this was actually two, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon in Skohegan, Maine. This was my apartment there. 
So what you're basically seeing here is all bits and pieces and all this information. If you go to my site, there's tons of things that come up. And really, it's not the most user-friendly interface. It's actually quite user-unfriendly. And one of the reasons also being part of the user unfriendliness is that it's everything is there, but you have to really work through it. So by me putting all this information out there, what I'm basically telling you is I'm telling you everything. But in this barrage of noise that I'm putting out, I actually live an incredibly anonymous and private life. And you know very little about me, actually. And really, my, so I've come to the conclusion that the way you protect the privacy, particularly in an era where everything is cataloged and everything is archived and everything is recorded. There's no need to delete information anymore. So what do you do when everything is out there? Well, you have to take control over it. And if, if, if I give you this information directly, it's a very different type of identity than if you were to try to go through and get bits and pieces. The other thing that's also interesting that's going on here is the fact that intelligence agencies, and it doesn't matter who they are, they all operate in an industry where their commodity is information or restricted access to information. And the reason their information has any value is, well, because no one else has access to it. And by me cutting out the middleman and giving it straight to you, the information that the FBI has has no value. So thus devaluing their currency. And I, and I, and I understand that on an individual level, it's purely symbolic. But if 300 million people in the US started doing this, we would have to redesign the entire intelligence system from the ground up. Because it just wouldn't work if everybody was sharing everything. And we're getting to that. You know, it's when I first started this project, people were looking at me saying, why would you want to tell everybody what you're doing, where you're at? Why are you posting these photos? Well, this was before an age before people were tweeting everywhere. And 750 million people were posting status messages or poking people. So in a way, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that I'm completely obsolete. I mean, I'm still doing this project, but it really is obsolete because you're all doing it. This is something that we all are doing on a daily basis, whether we're aware of it or not. So we're creating our own archives and so on. And you know, and some of my friends have always said, hey, you're just paranoid. No one's, you know, well, why are you doing this? Because no one's really watching and no one's really gonna bother you. So one of the things that I do is I actually look through my uh, server logs very carefully, because you know, it's about surveillance, so I'm watching who's watching me. And uh, I came up with these. So these are some of my sample logs, and it's a little bits and pieces, and you can see some of the things there. And I cleaned up the list a little bit so you can see. So you can see that uh, the Homeland Security likes to come by, Department of Homeland Security. Uh, you can see the National Security Agency likes to come by. I actually moved very close to them. I live like, right down the street from them now. Uh, Central Intelligence Agency, Executive Office of the President. Not really sure why they show up, but they do. I think you know, they, they kind of like to look at art. And I'm glad that we have patrons in the arts in, the, in, this, in these fields. So thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hassan, just one curiosity. You said uh, now everything is automatic, goes from my iPhone, but actually you do take the pictures and put on the information. So how many hours of the day does that take? Almost none. And the reason, it's just no, it's no different than taking, uh, sending a text. It's no different than checking an email. You know, it's one of those things. We got by just fine before we had to do any of those. So it's just become another day. I mean, you know, when we, when we update a status message, we, we don't really think about how long that's going to take. So it's really just a matter of my phone clicking a couple of clicks, send, and it's done. And everything's automated at the other end. And then the day you are in a place where there is yeah. no coverage, the FBI gets crazy? Well, it goes to the last point that I was at. Okay. So it, it, it holds on to the very last point. So if I'm, when I'm, if I'm on a 12-hour flight, you'll see the last airport that I departed from. Yes, son. Thank you very much. Thank you.